Puzzle this out. Shoe rules. When their feet hit the floor, we talk about their shoes. A presentation brought to you by ForYourCNA.com. Hi, in this lesson, we will talk about shoe rules. This is one of the most important rules in healthcare, but one that most people aren't really familiar with. Have you ever been a patient in a hospital or maybe visited someone in the hospital? Patients in a hospital usually get two things as soon as they are admitted, a patient gown and slipper socks. And you, like most patients, probably put these socks on and never gave them another thought. Well, let's think about that a little more. Slipper socks are designed to help minimize slips on a slippery, waxed hospital floor. But the problem is that the anti-slip grips are only on one side of the sock. Those socks can easily twist around, leaving the patient at risk. But as dangerous as that is, that's not the biggest problem with slipper socks. Have you ever stopped to think about these socks? Remember that patients that are too sick to be home come to the hospital and they bring all of those big bad germs with them. This means that every one of these rooms has pathogens. Then healthcare workers go from room to room, bringing new pathogens in with them. But you also have visitors tracking outside pathogens in on their shoes. And even though we've been taught that dirty linens and other soiled items should never touch the floor, not everyone will abide by that rule. There are lazy workers in every industry, even healthcare. Now think of all the things that may have touched the floor inside each of these rooms. Discarded tissues, bandages, soiled linens, drainage bags, various body fluids when sick patients can't make it all the way to the bathroom in time. The list is endless. Even with housekeeping doing an amazing job, those floors are not all that clean. Allow me to explain with an example. Let me introduce you to Ed. Ed had surgery this morning to remove his gallbladder. It was a minor surgery with only four small incisions, all covered by a Band-Aid. It was an outpatient procedure, and he was supposed to go home after surgery. But as he was recovering, his blood pressure remained too high, and he had to be admitted. He can walk and take care of himself. He just needs medications and monitoring. He's hoping to go home tomorrow. And this is Joe. Joe is Ed's roommate in the hospital. Joe had major abdominal surgery three days ago. He's very sick. He can't get out of bed by himself and needs help with all activities. He developed an infection and is on antibiotics, but they have a horrible side effect. So now Joe has diarrhea and doesn't always make it to the bathroom in time. The staff cleans up after any accidents, but the floor is not always disinfected. So when Ed gets out of bed on his own to go to the bathroom, he always makes sure he's wearing his slipper socks like the CNA told him to because he doesn't want to slip or fall. But what do you think he's going to be walking through on his way to the bathroom or when he's in the bathroom? Not to mention the return trip back to the bed. So after walking on all these floors with his slipper socks, what does Ed do? He climbs right into bed with them on and pulls up the sheet. It's warm and dark under those sheets. Looks like a great place to raise a bacteria family. All pathogens are on the hunt for a nice, warm, dark, moist place to settle down. But wait, it gets worse. Remember that Ed had surgery today, and he has four little incisions that aren't even covered with a proper bandage. Incisions are the very best warm, dark, moist place for any bacteria to set up shop. And Ed has four of them all within easy reach of the pathogens that just got into bed with Ed. As these pathogens get deposited onto the sheets, when Ed gets in or out of bed or tosses and turns, they get spread around his sleeping environment where they come into contact with his skin and clothing. Yep, this is an infection just waiting to happen. Now, if Ed had put shoes on before he walked into the bathroom, those pathogens would be on the bottom of his shoes and not snuggling right up in bed with Ed. Pretty high on the gross meter, huh? Without shoes on, slipper socks can become contaminated as the patient walks around their environment, and that contamination then climbs into bed with them. This is a great reason that everyone should wear shoes when walking in a healthcare setting. But there's another reason that patients should always wear shoes in all healthcare settings. Think about the environment for a moment. 
Do we use sharp objects in healthcare? Things like injection needles, lancets, IV needles, phlebotomy needles, and suture needles are frequently used in healthcare environments. These items are very small and could potentially fall on the floor unnoticed. And those are just a few of the sharp objects used on a daily basis around here. Then consider routine office supply items like thumbtacks and staples, not to mention any broken glass that might be missed from broken flower vases. And you begin to see that there are plenty of dangerous items that can poke unprotected feet. Would you walk around here without shoes? Then why do we ask our patients to? This is a dangerous practice from both a safety and infection control standpoint. This danger is further amplified when a patient has diabetes. Patients with diabetes often lose feeling in their feet, and they have trouble healing injuries to their feet too, which means that any injuries may go unnoticed and may be prone to infection. Since many of our patients won't be able to feel injuries to their feet, shouldn't we keep all of our patients safe by having them wear shoes when out of bed? And that's where shoe rules comes in. For the exam, you must actually say something about their shoes. Something like, I see you have shoes on. Or maybe, are your shoes tied well? Or even, you already have your shoes on. But you must acknowledge their shoes in some way if their feet hit the floor. For some skills, their shoes will already be on. But for others, you will have to put the patient's shoes on before they stand up. Always look to see if the patient has shoes on before standing them up. This is an important testing principle. When assisting a patient to stand, their feet must be flat on the floor. If not, you will pull them off balance as you lift them, causing them to fall. You must ask if their feet are flat on the floor before standing. You will use a gait belt to help patients stand. The gait belt must be fastened so that it is snug around the patient's waist. You should only be able to fit four fingers flat between the patient and the belt. A gait belt that is too loose can slip upward as you lift the patient, catching under their arms or breasts, which can cause injury, bruising, and falls. You don't want it too tight either, which can restrict breathing. Four fingers flat shows that it's snug enough to remain in place, but still allow breathing room. Each of these rules is very important, not only for the test, but in clinical practice. Keep these rules in mind while performing any skill that involves the patient's feet hitting the floor. Remember, if the patient's feet hit the floor, we talk about their shoes. We'll learn more about diabetes, the gait belt, and body mechanics in other lessons. So stay tuned for more exciting adventures in patient care. In the meantime, keep these rules in mind when ambulating patients and transferring them from bed to chair. Keeping the patient safe is the most important job we have.